Hey everybody, we're teaching Tilt Brush, and this lesson is all about the environments themselves. You can see our lovely basic environment that we start with is this hillside, slightly foggy in the background. Now it is possible to customize your environment, change the light color and direction, fog, that kind of thing, but that's a different lesson. This lesson is looking at the different environments that come provided with Tilt Brush. Now if you're using the basic tools, the beginner tools, your environment is up at the top, up here, environments. I'm going to be using the advanced tools, the full set, and so environment is down here. It looks like a little landscape, uh, environments. So the first environment that comes up is our standard environment, this one. Now one thing to know about some environments, we're going to play a little game today, uh, and it's going to be called Floor or No Floor. So some environments, you'll notice with this one, I'm going to raise the ground a little bit. We actually have this floor here, and you cannot actually draw below the floor. So if I wanted to draw a nice tree, you can't draw roots, because I cannot draw below that floor. It's something that's going to be there to cut off the view. If we get down here, again, with our more normal view, we can, but you can see it then loses all of the horizon, that type of thing. So there is a floor as part of the standard environment. Let me get rid of our trees. So we're going to play our little game of floor or no floor. Standard environment has a floor. So we're going to look at environment number two called night sky. Now night sky gives you stars in the sky. If I turn this around, you can sort of see stars in the background and a gray horizon line. Horizon line. Floor. So if I raise this up, again, you can see I get cut off when I hit that floor. I can go under the floor, but now it's a totally different environment. So this environment has a floor. Environment one, standard. Environment two, night sky. Environment three is pure space. Again, we've got stars and galaxies in the background. We also have this moon right here. As I make the world bigger and smaller, we have this moon. Now in deep space, there is no floor. I can keep going down and down and down. There is no floor in space. No floor in the space environment. So environments, one standard and two night sky both have a floor. Space does not have a floor. Environment three, dress form. Exactly what it says on the tin. If I make this smaller, you can see it's an actual mannequin. So I can actually try drawing dress designs, that type of stuff. Now since this one is meant to be in a room, you can see we do indeed have a floor on this particular environment. So this is a floored environment called dress form. So we're going to get back to center here and look at the next environment, pedestal. Very similar to dress form in that you start with an object on screen. So you can draw things sitting on that particular object, a pedestal in this case. Yes, indeed, this one also has a floor so that we are having a surface, and when you go back to normal size, I am roughly standing on the floor itself. Pedestal and dress form, both with floor. Environments, dress form, pedestal. So this last one on the first page is snowman, and yes indeed, just like the other ones, it's an actual object on the stage, with a floor. Now it's nice if we can look up close. It's a nice snow texture. So this is trying to create a winter scene. You can even see there is snow falling as part of this environment. If you look at the background, we have those lovely sort of hills that are actually fairly close. There is a floor to this environment, but it's actually a full environment type of thing. It's actually a lot of fun to play in and draw silly fun stuff and have a good time. A playroom type of thing. So the first page, most of these have a floor. Night sky uh, has a floor, but space is the one with no floor so far. 
Page two, Pink Lemonade. Wow. This is actually nice for doing things like a sunset painting and things. This gives you a nice color variation in the background. In this, it's very vibrant, but it actually works very well. Another thing about this one is this is a no floor environment. So I can paint up and down as far as I need. So pink lemonade is a no floor environment. And the one next to it on page two is pistachio. Pistachio, a different color scheme, but it is also a no floor type of environment. So these are some different backgrounds, depending on the type of painting you're trying to construct or the type of environment you want to paint in. So we had pink lemonade and pistachio bringing out this vibrant, vibrant background. Illustrative. Now, this is not an actual just plain white background. Illustrative. Let me actually change to a different pen here. I'm going to go slightly larger with, say, duct tape. Now, if we look here, I'm going for a black color. That's not bad. But as I start working with different items, let's go for a vibrant blue using a different type of pen. See how it's translucent? This is not the translucent version of the pen. That's the solid version of the pen. But we still have some interference, some differences. Illustrative isn't quite the same thing as a solid painting background. It will have variations, translucencies and things with the objects you're painting with. This one indeed also has no floor. So I can go down as far as I need. Let's get back to our no floor here. So this one is a no floor environment. It's just not exactly the same. If you start layering things up, you'll be able to see through layers. So things like a blueprint, where we want many levels of information going across things, illustrative has that type of effect on the environment. It's not a true white background. It's meant more for sketching and overlay, onion skinning, that type of thing. We do actually have a true white background. And the difference being, this one is actually flat white and everything comes out a little sharper, a little bolder. It's not going to have false layering like you do have with the other environment. So pure white environment tends to give you a little more natural blank feel. This one is also a no floor environment, so we can keep going up and down as far as we need. White versus illustrative, they're very, very similar. And you'll actually want to play with them with your, for yourself to really see which one's going to give you the effects you need for the object you're trying to paint. So if we have the white, we also have the black, where everything is dark. This one is great for doing chalk marks, stuff like that, very sharp, bright colors. Uh, it's not actually going to affect your paints, so any of the effects and brushes that you use will actually uh, work during this environment, just with no background whatsoever. And again, this is a no floor environment, so we can go up and down as far as we need. Let's get back to center. Okay, let's get rid of our lightning bolts. So this is black and white are both no floor environments. Environments, both black and white. Blue is sort of a nice, happy medium. It's a smooth blue background, good for doing, again, blueprint design, that type of thing. You still can see colors and things as normal against those backgrounds. This is also a no-floor design where we can keep going up and down and down. So the page one of our environments, most of them have floors. Page two of our environments, none of them have a floor. So with these, you're limited with space and something to stand on. With these, you can draw up and down, make the largest scale that you wish. So that's the basic environments that comes with this tilt brush. Different environments for you to paint in, some of which will have slight variations on how the brushes themselves appear. But it's a matter of, do you want a floor? Or do you want no floor to make the painting you want? This is the type of things that we're going to be doing here. And get back to our normal setting. Undo. Not only does it undo our writing, but you'll notice it undoes the environment changes as well. So that's why I'm back to our main standard brush here. 
Well, thank you for joining us for this particular one. Let's see if I can spell it properly this time. Uh, we're going to be doing this every week. So there's always going to be new things added to this channel. So feel free to give us questions in the comments to let us know about the types of things you wish to learn about. And we're going to be here doing all these lessons. Now that we've got the environments under control, we will be doing one about customizing and taking control of the environment for yourself. So thank you for joining us for Teaching Pillbrush.